Hey everybody, so in today's video we are tackling the dreaded uh, spark plug replacement uh, in the uh, 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. Uh, this will be pretty similar across all Pentastar models. I think in Chrysler they started using them in like 2011, then in Jeeps 2012 plus. Uh, obviously Ram uh, for a lot of their vehicles as well. So anything with the 3.6 liter will be pretty similar um, to what's going on here. And the reason why this is a more challenging than typical spark plug job uh, is because the intake manifold or plenum, whatever you want to call it, um, goes off at like a 90 degree angle toward the one of the front wheels uh, and it covers up three of the coil packs and three of the plugs. So you do need to remove that in order to do this job. Um, on my Grand Cherokee, it goes off towards the passenger side. Not sure if I'm remembering this correctly. I thought it might have been different. I've done it before in a Wrangler, uh, but I might be wrong. I think it has something to do with if it's valve variable valve timing, that kind of deal. I don't know, but I do know that regardless, um, it's going to cover one of the banks. So uh, passenger side, cylinders one, three, and five. Driver side is cylinders two, four, and six. Uh, the, doing this on a 2018 uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, that should be the same for. Uh, if you orient yourself uh, on the front of a 3.6 liter uh, Pentastar motor. The uh, reason why I needed to know that was because I had a misfire. Uh, the car started violently shaking, um, just uh, cylinder three. Uh, so the whole harmonic balance, like engine was out of balance and uh, it just made it undrivable. Uh, my wife is actually driving it, had to pull off on the side of the highway. Um, so that was an adventure getting it back, um, but luckily not a whole lot of expensive things. I thought it might have been a motor mount. Uh, the vehicle is shaking so badly, um, and you know, side of the highway, it's, it's hard to really tell, but once I got it hooked up to my scanner, um, it became pretty obvious that it was a misfire in cylinder three. Uh, I was able to take a look at the motor mounts and they were all uh, intact, which is good. Uh, a good way to tell sometimes is there's usually like a type of fluid inside your motor mounts. If you see it leaking um, out of the mount, that's a, a good way to verify. Um, so anyways, uh, this is a dreaded job by a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people on the internet are, have a lot of strong opinions about the engineering of the 3.6 liter engine. Uh, and I'll be totally honest, it is not that bad. Um, it's something that it does make changing spark plugs a little bit annoying. Uh, it's going to take you maybe an extra hour or two. Uh, but I think for, you know, people that are like, I'm not going to buy a car based off of this. Like, yeah, for, you know, if you're doing it every hundred thousand miles and it costs you an hour and a half extra uh, time to change spark plugs, that's the reason why you're not going to buy a vehicle. doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, um, but, uh, your mileage may vary. You know, everyone's entitled to their own opinions. I, like I said, I don't think this is a particularly challenging job to do. It just, there's a lot of pieces to keep track of. So, uh, enough intro talking for me and let's jump into it. So some of the things that you're going to need, um, anytime that you are removing that intake manifold gasket, uh, you're going to want to intake manifold itself. You're going to want the gasket set for it. So I got the Felpro gaskets. Uh, feel free to use obviously anything you want. Uh, they are technically reusable, but if you're going to take the time to do this, uh, it's like 30 bucks. So it makes sense not to have any vacuum leaks if you do this correctly. Uh, the second thing is the spark plugs uh, right there. Um, I always go with the OEM plugs, just personal preference. If you want to do something else, that's fine. Um, but these are the OEM plugs for, for my application, uh, the Champion. I think it was 94.17s. Uh, like I said, it's 2018. They've been making this engine for over a decade now, so uh, I don't know uh, if it'll be the same or if it'll be different for you. I know, I think my 2012 uh, Wrangler actually did use the same plug. So um, like I said, check, verify. Uh, the other thing, I had that misfire. So I was taking everything off, figured I'd uh, see if it was the coil. Uh, so not very good mechanic work by me there. Uh, just kind of guessing, but given that I was taking it off, I was doing the plugs anyways. Um, figured it would be smart just to spend I was uh, standard coil there uh, I was 40 bucks at the parts store uh, O'Reilly uh, the nice thing about standard was I took it out of the box it was Mopar uh, it had the Mopar part numbers on it Mopar symbol everything so I uh, paid 40 bucks for I'm sure the dealer would have charged a lot more for um, things for me I like to use uh, dialectic grease um, right there I got a big canister of it because uh, anytime you're doing plugs I think it's good to just put a little bit on the top so I don't seize um, on the coil packs uh, five eighths um, spark plug socket. Invest in one of those. Uh, get yourself a nice one if you're going to be working on cars for a while. It's a magnetic one. Makes it a lot easier to uh, take it in or out, especially if it's going in. Uh, there's a de decent amount of depth um, into the head that these ones go in, so um, I like that. 
Um, eight and 10 millimeter, uh, those are gonna be the primary bolts um, and nuts that you're gonna be removing. Um, so wrenches, uh, you're gonna need probably a set of sockets, extensions, those kind of deal, but basically everything's either eight or 10 millimeters. So uh, pretty straightforward there. Um, I used a whole bunch that aren't on the screen right now, but um, in terms of like deep sockets and, and extensions and things like that, but um, having those uh, wrenches as well will help. Uh, you'll want a spark plug gapping tool. They should come pre-gapped, but you never know. Uh, and then the other thing I like to do is to check the gap when I take them out, uh, just to see what everything is looking like uh, from there. And then I did put a last thing um, off to the side here. Did use a trim tool, some of those Christmas tree clips for the wiring harness uh, to not destroy them. Uh, it's nice to use the proper tool for that. So these are all of the tools, parts, things like that that you need for this job. Uh, like I said, it is tedious. You're gonna be removing a lot of eight and 10 millimeter bolts, but there's nothing about this that's super challenging. You're not removing, you know, AC compressors and anything like that. You're not, you know, don't have to recharge any systems, check for pressures, things like that. You just unbolt it, you take it out, you remove the coils, remove the plugs, put the coils and plugs back in, and then you bolt the intake manifold back in. Um, so it may look daunting, but like I said, this is just like a Lego set. It's just got a few more pieces in it than uh, your average Lego set. So uh, don't be intimidated by this. I saw someone online posted a dealer quoted them $900 for this. Um, so I don't know what the going rate for labor is, but um, yeah, I would do these all day if I got paid 900 bucks to do it. So like I said, this is not my first time doing it. I am not perfect. I'm not a, uh, you know, not claiming to be by any means, but um, it's a great way to save a little bit of money, get to know your vehicle a little bit better, um, and to address. If you'd like me, I had a misfire. Uh, but if you're just doing this and you, you know, have 100,000 miles on your car and you're following the standard maintenance procedures, again, it's just something that you can do to, to make sure that you don't get a misfire like I did. Only 35,000 miles on my wife's Jeep, though, so a little bit surprising to have a misfire that early on, but uh, is what it is. So good luck. Um, again, not as bad as it looks. Some things like this, it's nice just to uh, take that first step. You know, you, you, if you're upgrading from just doing oil changes and you're not sure if you want to dive into something like this, um, you know, my advice would be to uh, have a little bit of confidence and, and move forward. That's how you get better. Take some, uh, take some learning opportunities and, and you'll be good to go. So as always, thanks for watching. Hope this is helpful for you. I was pretty anxious before I did this for the first time and I've been working on vehicles for a while, but uh, like I said, after doing it the first time, it just takes a little bit of time. Uh, way overhyped, not too bad. So um, enjoy, like, subscribe if this helps and uh, thanks for watching. All right, so first step, you're gonna have a torque screw here. I already removed it. Um, and once you do that, this will pop off. There are, uh, I think it's four uh, tabs. Maybe it's a few more. Uh, I can point them out right here, 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 here. So those are the, I guess, five that uh, you're gonna be pulling up on when you remove that. From here, uh, we're just gonna continue by removing each of our pieces, uh, kind of one thing at a time. You can actually partially see the ignition coils um, on the driver's side right here. So, you know, if you have a cylinder two, four or six misfire, just need to do those plugs. Uh, much less in-depth process, but uh, parallel to all these on the other side, you're gonna see underneath your intake manifold, intake plenum, whatever you wanna call it, um, you're gonna see cylinders one, three, and five. Um, so because of that, we got cylinder three misfire and because I'm gonna have the plenum off, we're just gonna change all six of the plugs while we got everything apart because why not? Uh, so just gonna start kind of disconnecting everything in and around this, just wanna make some space and we gotta make sure that when the plenum pulls off that there's nothing attached to it. So, um, you know, a lot of this is just gonna focus on taking it one step at a time, being pretty patient and making sure that we have all of our connectors off and not breaking anything when we do take it off. Um, and we'll just kind of go from there. So uh, I'm gonna start with our air intake, gonna get our sensors unplugged and we're gonna get this out of here. All right, so our next step here is we're just gonna try to get all of these wires on the front by the throttle body disconnected. Um, so kind of just one at a time, being really careful, don't wanna break anything. Uh, just gonna push our red uh, pin clips back and then they should uh, slide out right after that. And then we should be able to get basically this entire bracket here just 
off uh, this black part on the front. So if we can do that, uh, one less thing that is on our engine. So uh, intake manifold, I should say. And depending on how old your Jeep is, um, these might be a little bit more prone to braking. So just be careful would be my advice with them. They do slide off extremely easily uh, once it gets to that point. So uh, that should hopefully be some motivation to not try to pull too hard. And there is one hidden on the bottom here. Slide this guy up. That was tight because not a whole lot of clearance. So we have most of ours uh, disconnected here from the throttle body. Got one more clip to slide out here. And we are just freeing up uh, this harness. So the next step is going to be to remove that. And that should let it come is a uh, 10 millimeter so it should just take a second just to get it started and then it should pop right up and just a note always a good idea um, when you can to keep track of what bolts go where that is one of the benefits of uh, recording for me is that I can always just go back and and take a look at uh, what's coming up all right, so for our next step, we're just going to start disconnecting some more lines um, around as we keep going and just kind of take one step at a time. So uh, on these ones here, if you push in on this white clip and you push down strong enough, it should just pop out. Um, and then that is clipped in um, in the back. This is just a vacuum line. So that should just pop um, right out and we should slide up and over and that is just clipped in in the back there this just kind of pop this out and out of the way this just got to uh, find a way to pull up uh, yeah. that is stuck pretty good sometimes if you can just get a small I don't want to really put any force. This is all plastic, but just get a little bit to get it started. Now it is ready to pop directly up. And then now this can just kind of be tilted out of the way and it'll kind of hang around there until this is removed and that's okay. Um, so then we got another line right in the back as well. So that is our next step. Kind of can't see it on the camera, but 
where I'm reaching my hand. It's just like this white clip where you push in and pull up on it. And then that, as you'll see, it's an exact mirror. It's the same uh, hose there. And then there's one more uh, a green one on the back here as well. The same idea on these, you just pinch them and then they pop right back. So now that we got those loose, <laughs> gonna take these and get them in a spot where they uh, are going to allow us to remove this without obstructing anything. quick look at some of our brackets that we have on the front here uh, to get them out of the way so I think a lot of these are 10 millimeter bolts and I also know uh, by our dipstick here we're gonna have a few 10 millimeter bolts as well so a combination of wrenches sockets uh, just whatever fits I got my flexible ratcheting wrench so I like to use that at first if I can especially working with plastic Makes it a little bit more challenging to put a real amount of torque on it and it does fit nicely into a lot of these tighter spaces, which helps. And you'll notice that there's no real strain or challenge to getting these bolts off. Um, so you want to remember that when you put them back on. We're not trying to uh, set the record for most torqued intake gasket because you don't want the plastic to crack. This one I'm going to lock it into place. And then that should allow me to get onto you. Right and like I said, I feel like this kind of, when you're in this tight space, just whatever you're comfortable with, if you want to use the swivel head or stubby wrench or any of those things, all of them will work. So, uh, no issue using anything. And I will say for, you know, a lot of this, this seems like a expensive process to have the dealer do. A lot of people are scared by it, but if you're just patient with it and take your time while you're doing this, I'm popping some clips and loosening some bolts. So, you know, nothing really to uh, get too upset about. You just want to take it slow. So the next step, we do have a few um, on the front here that we are going to loosen as well. So I'll just put it on time lapse instead of boring you, but we're just gonna basically take the, the front brackets off and we'll go from there. vehicle that you're uh, firing orders correct you're not you know swapping plugs that kind of deal uh second thing is you're gonna want to make sure your plugs are gapped uh, they should come pre-gapped at i think it's 43 thousandths but always good to check uh either way don't just want to blindly trust so start out the uh driver's side this is my misfire cylinder so that's one i'm going to take a bit of a closer look at but i'm going to save that one for last and just do the uh the rest of the plugs uh keep it simple for starters So 
And again, not a whole lot of torque uh, to get this off, so uh, no need to uh, stress too much about that there. Just a reminder not to over torque it when you are pre tightening it as well. Something to invest in if you don't is a nice uh, spark plug socket, a nice magnetic one, It'll solve a lot of issues for you. Five thousand miles on this plug. Uh, I checked the gap on it just to see where where we're leaving it from. Yep, right at forty-three thousandths. Uh, a little bit of actually gas on that one. And this is RER eight ZW YPD four. Matches what's going on there. For spark plugs, I like to keep it simple with the stock motor. You want to keep these things stock. So again, slide the gauge on, check the gap. We are good with our gap. So we're gonna put it back into the magnetic socket. And then just really feeling this nice and easy. Making sure that it's clean and not really putting any pressure. There's no resistance on it. So I know it's going in there, it's not cross-threading. That would not be good. Mostly tighten there. Pop this on. If you want to use a torque wrench, I think the spec is 13 uh, foot pounds, but uh, spark plugs, you just want to, I'd say most of the time, sometimes a torque wrench should be a couple of false reading, anything like that. You want to do it just snug by feel. Not too much, not too little. And you should be good to go. Uh, last thing that I like to do is just put just a small dab of uh, dialectic grease. Um, inside of the boot. That way when the uh, plug comes off next time, hopefully it'll be uh, just as easy as it was this time. So pop that back down. Make sure it firmly engages. And then once it does, just gonna re-thread our back onto the coil pack to hold that in place. And then you'll just repeat this process for all the plugs. Uh, I am going to change the coil pack because I had a misfire in cylinder number three. I am hoping that it is that, not a fuel injector or any uh, valve issue, but only one way to find out. So. And again, just nice and snug, and it should be good to go. So I'm gonna put this on time lapse so I don't bore you with doing the uh, the other five, and uh, we'll go to putting everything back together after.
right, so uh, last up here, just swapping out those uh, plenum gaskets and uh, doing that after we'll be able to put everything back together. So um, I think technically you can reuse them, but if you have everything off, it'd be silly to, to chase a vacuum leak. To be honest, I actually considered it because um, this just has a misfire and it's only got 30,000, 35,000 miles on it. So, you know, they're not, if you were doing it at 100,000, you know, I would say it'd be crazy if you didn't replace them, but just depends on the situation. But like I said, just, uh, they're not super expensive. I think full price at the auto parts store was like 30, uh, $37 for these at O'Reilly. Another interesting thing to note um, is I was putting these in when I swapped out the coil, kind of cool. I uh, went for the auto parts store brand coil just because that was what was available and it was I think like 40 something dollars and it was from O'Reilly. They're the only ones that had it in stock where I was um, and the brand is standard what it says on the package but when I went to put the coil on it's got the Mopar branding and Mopar part numbers on it so I think I uh, standard must manufacture or share a factory or something but kind of neat that you can buy uh, what the dealer would charge you probably three times as much for a uh, coil from the auto parts store and it's quite literally a Mopar genuine part So I got all six of those out. Put six new ones in. I got little ribs on the sides. I got Felpro. I always use them for gaskets and stuff. Many different vehicles. So just want to make sure that they're nice and sealed all the way around. And that's generally the process there. So I'm going to throw this on time lapse again. Don't want to bore anybody here. And I'll uh, just put everything back together. Reverse of uh, how we started. Thank you. 